Hey gents, Scheme Rhythm here with Let's Play Dark Souls Part 3. So, last time we fought our way through the Undead Burg after talking to some of the NPCs, and we're about halfway, no, not even halfway through the Undead Burg, who am I kidding? Now, because we rested at this bonfire, these, MP these uh, enemies respawn, so if you'll excuse me, I'm going to just cut to when I beat them off. Okay, so, now that I've done that, um, I actually didn't fare too well and had to use another Estus Flask. You might notice that my Estus count is down to 8. Whenever you rest at a non-kindled bonfire, it'll only restore Estus up to 5. If you have more than 5 when you rest at it, it doesn't restore it back up to 10. And it doesn't restore them at all, in fact, from there. So, if you come back down here and you open this door, you go through here, you get the wooden shield. Now, I'm going to equip this wooden shield because, if you look, it's actually lighter the weights down at the bottom right. Um, it has better defense all around except for fire defense, but it doesn't have the nice advantages that the target shield has as far as parrying goes. But all the same, I'm kind of I played through an entire file using a shield like this, so I'm not too worried about it. So with these guys, you don't do that or that. Kick them or attack them and provoke them into attacking. These spear guys are the most defensive enemies in the game. And the easiest way to get rid of them is to get for, provoke them into attacking, parry, and repose. Alternatively, you can try to get their attacks to bounce off your shield but then, and then start swinging away. But I prefer this way because it's a little faster and it gets you extra souls. Um, you get bonus souls just, I think, whenever you do a lot of extra damage over the enemy's health. I'm not entirely sure on that one. If someone could fill me in on that, that'd be nice. Here's why I saved all these souls. Well, now, you seem to have your wits about you. Then you are a welcome customer. I trade for souls. Everything's for sale. <laughs> it's all falling together now, isn't it? So, this guy, he sells you some pretty neat stuff, firebombs, you know, a nice supply of firebombs there. The residence key, which if you didn't have the master key, you, you would uh, have to buy to progress, actually. But you don't need to buy it because you have the master key as a thief, and you should have chosen the master key as your gift if you're not a thief, by the way. Um, he also sells a repair box, but there's a guy much later on who sells it for cheaper, so I'm going to hold off on that. Um, basically, weapons, armor, and uh, shields break down over time as you're fighting through battle, and you need to repair them. But it's not going to be that big of a deal until right around when we get to the first next guy who sells them anyway, so why not? He also sells most of the starting equipment for all the other characters. Um, scimitar is for the Wanderer, I know. Uh, I think Short Sword is for the Knight. Um, hand Axe, which is for the um, Pyromancer, of course, the club from the... You know, deprive. He sells a dagger. It has the same physical attack damage and parameter bonuses that dagger, the regular bandit dagger do. It doesn't have a bleeding auxiliary effect, but it's lighter. Um, I prefer the bandit dagger for its bandit uh, knife for its uh, its appear for its bleeding effect because that's a major factor against a lot of enemies. Um, and as far as the weight goes, it's not. 0.5 isn't that big of a difference, honestly, in the end. Um, one weapon I'll recommend buying, since we have the souls for it, is a short bow. Um, you'll find out why later, but sh bows in general are also good for high dexterity characters, so arrows will do more damage. Arrows in general aren't a very viable combat tool. He also sells other shields, but we're fine with what we have. And I'm going to buy 60 standard arrows, so that used up all of my souls right there. So, if you don't, so I guess we can talk to him and learn a little more about what he knows. Things are getting treacherous in these parts. A horrible gate demon has moved in below. And up above, there's that humongous drake and a bull demon too. If you stick around this place, it might end up being your grave. <laughs> Wait, so he's saying that giant dragon that we saw is actually up there? God damn it! That bull demon doesn't sound very pleasant either. And that goat demon down there? Knowing what that is, I'm actually dreading that part. Oh god, I don't want to play that part.
anymore, but oh well. I'm doing it for you guys, damn it. I will say that if you kill him, which you can kill every NPC in the game, by the way, if you kill him, you actually get an Uchi Katana, which is a katana weapon. I think the best one in the game, actually. I don't know. It's not that different from the only other katana in the game. It's just a little... Eh. It's got, like, two points of damage stronger or something like that. But otherwise, they're almost exactly the same, except for their moveset. Um, let me talk a little bit about parameter bonuses. I mentioned before that I'm going for a high dexterity character. Bandits use daggers, which are weapons that have that scale primarily off of your dexterity stat. You know, you might have noticed before that um, there were those little symbols at the bottom left of the screen when I was checking on weapons. Um, let me see. There we go. Parameter bonus E and B. E is next to strength. B is next to dexterity. Then the next ones are intelligence and faith. Those affect the strength of weapons. If, in fact, if you go back to the dagger and you see, look next to attack, physical, you see a little plus eight. That's your parameter bonus. And the more you build up the weapon and the higher your parameter stats are, then, you know, the stronger the weapon is. That was a fail. That was a fail, too. That was not a fail. I like daggers because their critical hits actually do a lot of damage considering how powerful the weapon is. Alright, so we're going to go up here. This is a new area too. That's right. I forgot about that. Huh. Alright. And then we can pick up throwing knives, which that guy also sells, I think, but eh. I don't ever buy them. They're not that useful. You can run and jump here. But hey, does this look familiar? It should. This is the area you couldn't get to before. So, if you walk across here, you can go and get crossbow and standard bolts for free. Or you can sell them later. Your choice. This game doesn't operate very well at 480i, apparently. Oh well. I usually play it in 1080i, but I'm doing this for you guys, man. I'm doing it for you. So if you come down here, you'll notice this guy. Aw, oh, plunge attack failed again. Bleeding works through shields, by the way. I'm not sure if you noticed that or not, but if they're guarding, you can still make them bleed. Works the same online. It's annoying as hell, I think, but whatever. Uh-oh. What the key thing to timing a parry is that if you get it at the last possible second, you can't go wrong. See, the blade, his blade was practically touching me by the time I actually swung the shield at him for that one. So, I will meet you guys back at the bonfire. Okay, we're back. So, um... As always, you know what? I'm gonna cut out me fighting these guys. You have to fight the archer, that guy there, and the other guy down there, because otherwise they will they will gang up on you whenever you try to go across there. Ooh! Ah, damn it! That means oh well, something else to explain while I'm fighting. So that little glow you might have noticed if you look at, back at the footage that um, I actually got another Estus flask there. What happens is. Whenever another player on Xbox Live kindles the fire that you just rested at, um, it actually will add to the number of Estus flags you have by one. Which is pretty nifty, I think. Encourages, uh, encourages online play in some ways. So, this area. When you're crossing that bridge, stick to the left side. The fire bombs will never hit you as long as you stick to the left side. And when you, whenever you're trying to go through here, as long as that door there is closed, this guy with the shield won't come in and burst your bubble. However, in subsequent times through, he will. So be careful of that. Ah, I failed that one. Stop the attack to avoid the firebomb. Shit. Hey guys, I'm back. I died there. Yeah, not, not even going to lie about it. So one thing you can do is you can actually draw them back across the bridge and they will 
get stuck there. Um, I'm going to back up, heal, don't be afraid to do that. Parry him. I'm trying to kill them before those guys there get into, uh, there we go. I'm trying to kill them before they get into firebomb range, because they annoy the crap out of me when they start just spamming those firebombs. So let's see. This is one thing you can do. Usually what I do is I take them out one at a time. But I usually... Usually they don't come in after me that much at a time. Um, what happens is they're actually up there on that platform there and they throw the firebombs from up there. And sometimes they fall off and yeah, that's what happens. Um, you can't go through there yet. Oh shit, I gotta... There we go. So, in here, there's an enemy. Oh, shit. <laughs> Take him down. There's another enemy here. He's completely optional, because there's nothing you get in here. Except pain and misery and possibly despair. You get souls, and he dropped something, didn't he? Yep. Short sword. Howl warrior waste block. Okay. Oh, look, I got one humanity. That must. You get humanity whenever you kill enough enemies in a row. Before you fight the boss, of course. Don't worry about evil about chests eating you until later. Just when you thought this game couldn't get cruel enough, eventually the chests will turn on you even. Okay, so up here you have a group of three enemies. Um, what I like to do is just run around them, kill the guy with the firebombs. Sometimes they will attack you while you're doing that. They shouldn't be able to kill you. And as long as you're careful, you should be able to uh, take these two out, no problem. Alright, so if you go up this ladder, there, this is where the uh, firebomb guys were, as I mentioned before. You can actually jump to this ledge over here, but there's really no point to it because there's nothing up here, up there. But there is something over here that's worth going to. Remember, don't use it. Sell it for later. So let's see. Uh, okay. Now, another good thing about the master key, you can open this up. So you go through here, and this is going to be your gold for this part of the game. Gold pine resin. Gold pine resin gives your weapon a lightning attribute. And... It does, causes your weapon to do about 10 times the damage that it normally does at this point in the game. I swear, it's ridiculous. So, up here. Sometimes you can find a uh, Twinkling Titanite Lizard going up the staircase. They drop a rare form of Titanite, which is used to upgrade weapons. Um, and they also drop Titanite chunks. Oh, look at this. There we go. Perfect. Who's left? Come on. Oh, that was a fail. And he let, he's not letting me forget it either. Back up and use this since they do that to you sometimes. They back up and use those. There we go. Got him! Oh man, this is going to be a long recording. Okay, guys. So I think I'm going to cut off the video here. We're going to go down this way in a second. So um, this has been Scheme Rhythm for Let's Play Dark Souls, and I will see you guys later. Bye.